welcome you guys to Let's Make Art. I'm so excited to paint with you. We have... <laughs> like Facebook is working. <laughs> All these exclamation points. We, pre we didn't know Facebook was working, so we appreciate you guys letting us know. We are painting this wonderful sea turtle tonight. He's so cute. He's so cute. Adorable. It's been so fun to see you guys paint them. I'm excited to paint them with you tonight. Uh, we have our uh, whole gang here. This is like the OG crew. That's right. Mm -hmm. uh, we have Natalie. Wait, what does OG mean? Original gangster. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. I just, you know, <laughs> I'm not an acronym girl, so, you know, I wanted to make sure it was something I agreed to. I'm an OG uh, girl. Yeah, she is. <laughs> <laughs> that was right. And we have Misty, and I'm Sarah Cray, and we have Jenny. These are all Doan women. Yeah. So I'm glad they're here. Michael, who was on the octopus tutorial who is also my husband is running video he is hey hey Hi. you hey he'll <laughs> they, be they have to see each other sometime yeah <laughs> that's the only time we get to see each other is when we're at work so it's great um he'll be Poor telling you. me where to look and all of that great stuff so i'm so excited to paint this the sea turtle is super fun there's a bit of steps but that's okay it's worth it uh, we're working with four colors tonight so we have black and Tahoe blue and tiger orange and deep yellow. So those four colors. Now, I know you guys have worked with the, the yellows from the subscription and other ones, but yes, they are very similar in color and that is okay. Does that- Hold please. Okay. <laughs> Michael, do you have sea turtle facts? People are uh, already no, asking. They bite. They, they bite. They they lay eggs on the shore. And they go to the same place to land. They do? Mm -hmm. Yes. Oh. Yeah. Wow, everybody has great facts. I think they're delicious, probably. Oh, oh Michael. I think these are oh. called flippers. <laughs> 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 don't eat turtles. Listen, not okay. No. Turtle not soup. Okay. We live in Missouri. We eat everything. No, no, <laughs> not turtles. <laughs> okay, so yeah, the four colors. So basically, you just need an orange, a yellow, a black, and a blue. Just those four colors, not a big deal. Um, we have five steps for this turtle. So we're gonna start off by doing the water around the turtle, right? We're gonna do a soft background for this, which is kind of a big deal for me because I'm not a fan of backgrounds, but it's good to know how to do them. So we're gonna do a little soft background, then we are going to do the shell, and then we're gonna do the shadows on the turtle to give us a little bit of shape. And then we are going to do the scales. Oh, somebody told me the correct term. I think it's called let me see if somebody answers. Scoot, scuts? I feel like scoots. it was scoots. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah, scoots. And uh, then we'll just finish it off with details. You know. I can never say that word about a turtle. Oh, I don't think. Scoots. Mm -hmm. Why? It just okay. Sounds, it just sounds <laughs> bad. <laughs> so right. I've seen if you said scoots with a dog. You know. <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> okay. So we have the outline for this. So if you have our oh, box see, there it is. or scoots, yes. Thank you, Amber. Uh, if you have our box, if you have the kit, you have the outline. If you don't have either of those, guess what? We put our outlines for free on our website. Yep. Just go ahead, download them, press print. You guys can paint along with us. Um, I actually like to do my outlines first and then we will do our warm ups. But first we gotta say our oath. Okay. Right. So everybody raise your right hand. And you say, I promise to be kind to myself. I promise to be kind to myself. <laughs> I promise not to compare my work. I promise not to compare my work. And I promise to have fun. And I promise to have fun. Perfect. Thank you. And I love starting that way because, you know, sometimes with art, it's all about like that one actually looks better. And it's not about whose is better. Um, it's just about fun and creating something and learning something. And when you're at the beginning, you might not totally love everything that you paint, but if you keep on painting, you'll get better. That's just how it goes with skills that you practice. So they already have theirs outlined. I'm going to outline mine really quick. So how I like to transfer images to my watercolor paper is I take the outline and I tape it down so that way it doesn't move while I'm tracing it. Using and painter's tape. Using painter's tape. If you have only regular tape, you can still use regular tape, but you're going to want to like hit it on your jeans or your sweater to pick up extra That's fuzzies. That's a really good idea. So it's not as sticky, it won't rip your paper. I've had to use that in a crunch a couple of times. So you can do that or Wasi tape. And then you have your graphite paper. It's in your subscription box or your kit. And there's like a dark side and a light side. 
People always say too, oh, I didn't get one of those, but it's in the little <laughs> it's postcard. In the postcard. Yeah. Listen, we're going to make it really clear soon. We're going to put like a sticker or something saying it's right in there. Look inside. Look inside here. Also, if you get one ever. <laughs> yeah. Also, one. yes. You can use it all <laughs> year. Yeah, you time. seriously only need one for your life. You I do. Think. You do. <laughs> Graphite paper. They last a really long time. They last a long time. They're super reusable. And actually, they get better over time because mm -hmm. then the graphite tends to fade over time. So your lines turn out lighter just mm -hmm. naturally because it's an older piece of graphite paper. So keep that first one and just keep on using it over and over again. Um, so you're going to put, sell the rest on eBay. <laughs> <laughs> one sheet of graphite paper available today. So dark side down, you're going to put it down there and then however hard you press is how dark the line is going to show up on your paper. Now watercolor is transparent, my friends, so you will see the pencil lines through the watercolor. Most of the time it's not a big deal. It used to stress me out when I first started doing that and then I realized that actually nobody cares at all. And if anything, it just adds to the originality of it, right? So. I'm going to just start drawing and you can use a pen or a pencil or colored pencil or a back of a paintbrush. And what I like to do is I like to do the first stroke and then I check it to see how light the line is. And if it's too dark, then I know to press lighter. If it's too light, I know to press a little bit darker. So you just try and go as light as you can. <clears throat> now I'm going to make mine a little bit darker so it's easier for you guys to see on the camera where I'm at and what I'm doing. But on your own at home, try and make it as light as you possibly can. Now another tip for when you're tracing is I sometimes use like felt tip markers. And that, because a felt tip is a soft point, it's going to be lighter, like a lighter line naturally. It comes in handy. A lot. They already traced it, so they're just watching me. We did. How are you guys doing today? So good. 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 Do you I'm guys know Susan Brown? Because she says she loves Dylan women. Susan Brown. <laughs> we love Susan Brown. We love Brown. Susan Brown. Yeah. Susan Brown, I love you too. Susan and Brown runs the retreat center with Cindy. Oh. That's oh. Susan. Yeah. Now Hi, you know Susan. who she is. And, um, and the, the, the whole retreat center is watching today over at Missouri Star. So awesome. that's pretty cool. That is fun. Hi, guys. Hello. Hello, everybody. <laughs> Take your time tracing it. And just remember that if you miss a spot, it's not a big deal. With the outlines, they're just to give you general idea of where to put things in the shapes. It's not a coloring book where it has to be blocky. So if you miss a spot, don't stress, just eyeball it. You'll be fine. Kimberly says she's vacationing from Aruba. What? And Mary's oh, eating chocolate and drinking wine and painting. That sounds wonderful. <laughs> that, sounds wonderful. <laughs> that sounds like just a really great time. Yeah. <laughs> Natalie's like, I'm into that. <laughs> Sign me up. Sign yeah, me up. Kidding. Okay. Did you say what brushes you're using yet? Oh, I'm using a round six and a round two. Great question. Those are my two brushes, round six and a round two. It's what I like to use. These are like, oh, yeah. we named them. Actually, Michael named them. Round twos, these are Keith's. Okay. Not round, why? It just seems like a Keith. It just, like two, it's just a Keith. It, I don't know. Yeah. Okay. All right. I, and then a round six is Hank. Hank. Hank is our round six. Keith and Hank. Hank. You can name your own brushes, okay? It's your brush. Don't be wrong. That's what I'm we've decided mine, to name ours. I think I'm going to call mine Lucinda and Susan. Ooh. Ooh. Yeah. Susan or Susan, I could see that. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, is which one's which? One's which? Is the small one? <laughs> okay. Oh, wow. So we got our outline. And I like to do my... <laughs> yeah. He who well, brushes honestly, who should not be named. If you can yes. only afford two brushes, a six and a two would be a good, a good combination. You tend to yeah. use those a lot. Those are the two I use the most in all of the projects we do. Six and a two. Okay, put your outline to the side. Oh. And we're gonna do our warm ups. Oh. So I love doing warm ups. I it's always handy to have scratch paper nearby so you can test colors and you can test brush strokes and all of that great stuff. And it's just a great way to get to know paint watercolor before we actually start painting. So the very first thing we are going to do is we are going to do a value change from light to dark in a smooth transition. 
So um, a value is not about a type of color, it's actually the lightness or darkness of a color. And with watercolor, the amazing thing is to make it a lighter value, all you have to do is add water. Usually with acrylic or oil, you have to add white paint, not with this. It does the work for you and it's so wonderful and that's why I love it. So grab, I like to use my six, unless most of the time. So grab your six, you're gonna get it wet and then you're gonna hit it off the side of your cup because you don't want too much water on your brush. If you go straight from brush to paper, too much water. So you're gonna grab it, hit it off, and you're gonna pick up a bunch of color. You can use whatever color you want. So I lift it up. I have a lot of paint in my paintbrush and kind of holding my brush more like horizontal so I get a thicker stroke. I'm going to do like a rectangle, just swooping it back and forth. That blue looks so good in the pan. Yeah, this is such a good blue. And then I'm just gonna swish it a couple of times, like hit it off, and right where I left off, it should be a lighter color because I added water. So you do a chunk, like that, and then you swish it a couple of times again, swish, 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 hit it off the side, right where you left off, blend out, and you just keep on going until you almost have like a barely there color. like that. So you can see in this transition, this is my dark value here because that's where um, the color is the most intense. And then as it goes to the right, it lightens up. And this is my super light value. Now, if you're not used to watercolor, you might look at this and be like, that's too light to put on a paper. People won't see that. They 100% will see that in watercolor. It's all about those subtle layers and color changes. So don't be afraid to go really light. And you can always layer too. So I'm a fan of the light values. Am I on the right side of the paper? Let me see. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So there is, um, there is like a smooth and slightly rougher side to the paper. You do want to paint on the rougher side. I know it's kind of hard to tell because both sides are super similar. So sometimes I actually just look at the paper grain itself against the light and that helps me sometimes. Okay. All right, two things. Beth wants you to say the names of the colors real quick. Okay, the colors we're using, Beth, we are using Tahoe Blue, Tiger Orange, Black, and Deep Yellow. So basically blue, black, orange, yellow, just those four colors. And where's graphite paper? If someone wants to know on their kit, where is it? So if you have the subscription box, it's folded in with the postcard. If you ordered an individual kit, it should be folded like on the back part. Um, if it is missing for some reason, we can totally mail you a sheet. If whatever reason it wasn't put in there, just email us at hello at letsmakeart.com. Okay. 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 So um, now what we're gonna do is essentially the same thing, except we're gonna do it in three separate squares because I just want you guys to get used to understanding how much of the balance between the paint and the water you have on your brush to get different values. So we're gonna do our dark value first. I'm just grabbing blue. So this is just me picking up blue and loading my paintbrush with blue, just like that. And then you're gonna swish a couple of times, hit it off the side, and then do a separate square. So this is kind of a medium value. So when we add like our light shadows and we do that, a lot of that is gonna be more like soft light washes and light values. So I just want you guys to see the, the difference in Progression. what you're adding. And then, <laughs> yeah, if your medium value is too light, let's say you did dark and then this was your medium, and that's a pretty huge jump between those two, don't stress out, just grab a little bit more color and add it to it. Or you can even grab color off the other color. Yeah. Okay, and then rinse one more time to get that last value. Natalie, I saw you at Mexican food last night. 
You did? I went to get your dog. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, were you in the restaurant? I came like right what before restaurant? you guys did. Okay. Sat down and came the in. The Mexican one in Cameron. We just picked oh. up takeout. <laughs> <laughs> I was hoping nobody would see me. <laughs> <laughs> my family was gone. I ate by myself like a sad person at a movie. Oh, <laughs> but you got to have everything you wanted and you didn't it have to true. share. It That's true. Awesome. <laughs> true. It's true. Um, it's true. his girls and Ashlyn out to dinner and then bought them all matching outfits. Who did? Wow. His, mom, his, his mom. His mom's oh in town. Yeah. She's, <laughs> she's so great. And so I much fun. Ashlyn was like, she loved it. I need to go shopping with her. Right? Yeah. <laughs> 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 Sarah and Michael. <laughs> Let's go, Mary. Mary Cray, you down? Okay. So the very next I technique bet. is we're going to do a little bit of wet and wet. And this is one of the funnest parts. I absolutely love it. Um, I'm just going to make my paintbrush wet. I'm going to grab... What color do I want to grab? Let's just do the yellow. I'm going to grab some yellow and I'm just going to make a rectangle. And you can do a light wash, you can do maybe a light. I'll do both so you guys can see. But while it's still wet, I want you to pick up some of the orange and kind of like just go along the side or like drop it in the middle and just see how it spreads. Oh. And you can do the same thing with just water. You don't, if you don't want to put a wash down at first, you can use just water. Mine must not be very wet. Now, if yours isn't very wet, then it's not going to spread very much. It's just going to kind of stay right there. Um, if that happens, you can just re-wet the area and then try and drop color in again. But basically, especially when we do the shell, we want to see these, we, we're going to drop in paint like this, and we want to be able to see these kind of like blooms of color, and they're going to create texture. And for some people that's stressful because you're going to want to blend it out, but I'm going to encourage you to let watercolor do the thing that it wants to do. Oh, Susan just has a joke. Can I say it? They're all doing jokes. They're so funny. You guys are so great. I love your jokes. Okay, Susan says... How do turtles communicate with each other? Shell phones. <laughs> <laughs> oh, nice. I know you guys don't appreciate puns the way I do, but I truly love them. And I I'm glad you guys I've had a like them too. I've had people ask if you're going to sell Let's Make Our Aprons. And since we're talking about my mother, I stole that apron from her in the late 90s. Because she oh, likes to bake. Did she yes. notice? Uh, she knows. So this <laughs> was, apron. my mother-in-law got this apron at her wedding. It was a wedding present. And we <laughs> somehow, I commandeered it, and now it's my art apron. Sarah stole it from me. Yeah. I it from <laughs> wow. And, um, now. yes, we are planning on doing aprons. That's so really cool. I'm really excited for that. <laughs> That's going to be so great. <laughs> okay. But first, like... <laughs> Let's just, let's, let's paint the sea turtle first. Okay. So, I'm trying to think if there's anything else that we want to practice. Yes, you know what? Let's practice the scoots. Or the... Scuts. <laughs> scuts. Wait, no. what is it called? Toots. Scoots. That's what it says on the board. <laughs> scoots. <laughs> uh, or the scales. Keenum kept on referring to them as freckles, and I'm like, that can't be right. <laughs> So, I can't believe that kid. <laughs> so I'm going to actually switch to my round two for this. Mm -hmm. And um, we're, we kind of want to get a brown color. And brown is essentially dark orange. So if we want to take a little bit of <laughs> poor, orange. Poor Amber. Scoots. <laughs> is everything OK? Yeah. OK. So I'm taking a little bit of the black, and I'm mixing it with the orange. And it's going to turn into this brownish color. Um, you can also get brown by mixing complementary colors like purple and yellow or red and green or blue and orange. Oh, hey, we can make brown two ways. Um, so what I just, I just want you to practice, and you can probably even use a rectangle that's already dry from our warm-ups, and I just want you to practice these kind of small, um, scaly-like shapes. And so... What I like to do is you just kind of start with the square and you just keep on making your way, but you don't want them to be too similar in size to where it feels like rows. You know what I'm saying? You don't want it to feel like this. 
where it's totally lined up. Are they supposed to be square? Or? They're not always square. And every turtle has different markings on them. So even if you don't like your scoots, I'm sure there's a turtle that has some <laughs> similar to them. <laughs> So really, they should just be all different shapes. There are different sh really they're, shapes. Yeah, they're different shapes, but they still kind of fit. The ones when I was looking at sea turtles, they kind of fit with each other, almost like mosaic tiles. You know what I mean? So it's like if you do kind of a wonky shape, then you'll do another wonky shape that kind of like goes along the edge of the other wonky shape. Does that make sense? You know what they say about scoots? There well, is no other scoot. There is no other. Yes, all there scoots are beautiful. Is all scoots say. are beautiful. I, I, don't, I do not think that is a truth. Is that a saying? <laughs> it is now. It is now at Let's Make Art. We just made it. All scoots are beautiful. A t-shirt. You should make a t-shirt. I should. <laughs> still going with the turtle jokes. I know. It's Wait, so I great. The turtle jokes. I love this kind of joke. What do you cut a turtle hmm. who takes up photography? A, a snapping, snapping turtle. turtle. Oh. <laughs> Why did the shrimp not want to share? He was a little shellfish. <laughs> what happens when you bring a turtle to a party? It becomes a celebration. Celebration. <laughs> this just is giving me so much joy in life right now. <laughs> you needed this. Oh, I really did. Okay, I feel good about our warm ups. We got it. Oh. I'm ready to paint. I'm ready to paint. Let's paint. Put your scratch paper Let's to the art. side. You know what, you guys? I have an idea. Let's make some art. Let's do it. Art. Okay. Like it. Great idea. Maybe you should start a business. I don't know. That's a really cool idea. <laughs> okay. So we are going to um, start with our water. And actually, I think it might be best if we start with clean water. Misty, oh. Natalie, do you mind actually cleaning these out just really quick? Not at all. Now, the reason why we want to start with clean water when we start with our water clean water, when we start with our water for our turtle, is we're going to do it blue, and then we're gonna use a really light blue at the top. Now, if you have colored water, and ours were green from our warm-ups, our water will have a green tint to it. So be aware of the water that you're using. It's actually really helpful to have a cup of clean water always, and then another cup for like rinsing your brush. What do you call a turtle chef? What? A slow cooker. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my god. I love you people so much. Oh, sorry. We're and we're still We're enjoying these we're what enjoying kind of photos these? do turtles take? We're napping. What? Shelfies. 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 <laughs> Shelfies, I like that. <sighs> these are great. These are great. Okay. So our very first step, we're going to put in our water. So keep in mind that very first Keep in mind that very first warm up where it's going to be dark and then it's going to lighten up and you just lighten it up by adding water. That's all you got to do. So I'm going to, oh Sue says according to Google, scoots are the plates on the shells. Oh. So not on the fins or flippers. I don't know. <laughs> listen, <lacking>. listen, <laughs> Michael, where, where are you with the facts? <laughs> Well, she hopes her she hopes her painting like isn't a turtle disaster. <laughs> <laughs> Kimberly, you're funny. Okay, I'm gonna use my six for this, and I'm gonna go ahead and just pick up the blue. Now, right underneath the shell and kind of the arms, it's gonna be a little bit darker. So that's where I'm gonna start with my pure blue color, and it's gonna be heavy. And this is gonna be the darker value area. So I have more paint on my brush then water. So I like to put that in and then I'm gonna swish a couple of times and then just spread out the color. And then you swish and you spread out the color. Now by doing this process by itself you are not gonna get a totally smooth transition but that is not our goal. So you see here that sometimes my paint is kind of moving and it's gathering in some places it's creating an unevenness. That is okay because we kind of want to give the feel of water anyway and I just think watercolor has this really wonderful quality of moving things on its own and I love that about it. And so it's really great to just embrace it. So I'm just kind of taking the color, moving it. And then you're gonna want to, like I like to kind of round out the edges when I get to the edge here. It's gonna be like a soft round. 
Someone said they're pronounced Skyutes. Skyutes? Oh, that sounds a lot better. That does sound better. I'm trying to get this top cam in focus. I'm sorry, everyone. Oh, Michael's work is working on focusing the camera. Okay, so I'm moving the water up in between the flippers. Now this is where it's fun too. This is wet and I'm gonna grab my blue and I'm gonna drop it right in there. Ooh. And it's just gonna move. So we're using a little bit of that wet on wet technique where you drop in that color, it's gonna move and do some really cool things. Now if you wanna help it to spread a little bit, that's okay. You just kind of like, come on little fella, move over there a little bit. Okay, I've seen this one a bunch of times, so I gotta say it. What do okay. you get when you cross a turtle and a porcupine? What? A slow poke. <laughs> that was funny. Wow. That's a good one. That is a good one. Okay, and I'm just, I am just going to keep going. Keep going around the turtle. Now, I, I like the idea of having like the water fade out. So it's gonna like transition to like a really, really light value of blue at the edge of my water. And that way I don't feel like it's just like a solid blue chunk. It kind of has that feel of like something that's coming around that's like fading out in the background. All right, more debate about the pronunciation. Okay. Well, now we are at Scut. Scute. Scute. Oh, that's cute. S K U. <laughs> so cute. Natalie, great pun. You guys are great. Thank you, Megan. Thanks, Megan. Thanks for that. Okay, and I'm gonna add a little bit more color, kind of right underneath that chin, on this side of the flipper. Someone sent me a message with like the different names between the front and rear flippers, and I like tried to commit them to memory. Dorsal and, and ventral. Is that true? Yeah. Okay. Well, well is dorsal the... Those are the twins you dated in high school. <laughs> ventral is the one closest to their butt. Dorsal is the oh, rear, and what? Wait. Ventral is close to oh, their butt. Oh, ventral? Like vent. oh, okay, and then dorsal oh, wow. is the front? Well, and like reptiles, like snakes, that little place is called their vent, where all their stuff comes out of. Oh, hey, I see. Hey, 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 this is a clean show. This is a family show. <laughs> Listen, everybody does that, Jenny. <gasps> <laughs> okay, now, as I'm getting to the top part of my turtle, I'm gonna be using a lighter wash. So I'm not gonna be using this pure blue straight out the bottle color, I'm using kind of more of a medium to light value wash up at the top. And to do that, all you're gonna do is you're just gonna grab water and then just pick up a little bit of paint. Just like pull some paint off to the side and grab it. And you can make your water go as far out as you want. This is your water, it's your painting, you can do whatever you want. I kind of just have it surround mine. I usually don't go to the edges on my paintings. That's just a personal preference of mine. But you guys get to make the choices here. This is your world that you're painting. What type of blue again? So the blue we're using is Tahoe blue. If you have Dr. Peach Martins, that is Norway blue. And I think maybe a similar blue, if you have like tubes, would be maybe a phthalo blue. I could tell people are into this because there are no comments happening on YouTube. <laughs> They're just painting. They're just painting. They're turtly awesome. Turtly awesome. <laughs> yes. So you can see as our paint is starting to dry here that I'm getting different textures and I am loving the textures that I'm getting. Everybody's textures they're getting in their water. Ooh, look at Natalie's over there. So pretty. So cool, so fun. Now you will see that maybe your paper starts to bend and fold a little bit. I see that's happening a little bit to some of your guys. If you wanna use blue painter's tape to tape your paper down, you are more than welcome to. Um, I usually just paint straight off the pad and that usually keeps it structurally sound enough that I can still paint. 
Um, but just remember, blue painter's tape is always a good option if you Where's just want to keep it. Piece of tape? So yeah. Okay. Well, you, there's actually a whole ring right there if you want to. Oh, perfect. There you go. Um, so just kind of check your water, see if there's any other... What now? He's what still now? Cracking up over the jokes. Is there more no, jokes? No, uh, Megan wanted to know what color that is in Crayola. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Cornflower. Oh, sorry, sorry, Morgan. Oh, Morgan, Morgan, I'm you're funny. Lady. Okay. All right. Let's see. We need a little more. That. I feel pretty good. How are you guys feeling about your water? Great. <laughs> you feel great, Misty. I'm That's how you so feel. Good. You're having fun. Yeah. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> hey, we always have fun here. We do. It is always a good time, isn't it? Cajun Sunshine Crafts, if you go ahead and shoot an email to hello at letsmakeart.com, they will help you right out. We will. Thanks, Michael. You're welcome. Okay. I feel good about my water. We're gonna do little splatters on the edge of, the edge of it because I like to do fun hip things. Mm -hmm. I'm a cool mom. So, I'm not a regular mom, I'm a cool mom. Um, I'm going to grab my paintbrush, have it, this one it's okay if it's a little bit more drippy because we're gonna splatter. And I'm gonna pick up some, a little bit of blue, not a lot because I don't want like super dark splatters, I want soft value splatters or light value splatters. And I'm just gonna like, you're just gonna like, like around the edges. If you want splatters. Oh, I got it all over the table, but not on my paper. That's okay, we I'm have, sorry. this is a work table. If you are at a nice table somewhere, don't do this part. <laughs> it's okay, it's okay, it's okay. Uh, I'm kind of doing it along the edges of mine. Um, if you get some on your shell, it's not a huge deal. Just kind of be aware. Or you can like maybe take a paper really towel. Fun, actually. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Misty. Here, Missy, just take your paper towel <laughs> and lift. It's fine. <laughs> if you accidentally get wet splatters on your turtle, don't freak out. Grab a tape, paper towel, soak those up. No, and laugh. for the most part, just laugh <laughs> and just say, I'm not mad about it. Splattering is fun. Sarah. Yeah. We have a question. Someone is trying to share their art on the Facebook group. Yeah. She says, how do I get approved on Facebook to share my paintings? <laughs> okay. Uh, well, well, first of all, you have to tell me the funniest joke I've ever heard. No, I'm just kidding. But I'll go through and I'll approve everybody. You do have to send in a request, but just request it. And I think every day we check it, we pretty much approve everybody. And then you can post your paintings in our Facebook group called Let's Make Art Watercolor. Okay. And next, Beth. <laughs> Um, Keenan and Brock are in Texas. I am Michael. I'm Sarah's husband. Yes, Keenan. So I flew in from Texas last night. We were in Texas for the yeah. Art yeah. Materials yeah. Association yeah. show. And it was so fun. Keenan and Brock are still there looking at new stuff to carry in our store and all that great stuff. But I get to paint with you. Okay, we're going to move on to step two. Are you guys ready for step two? So ready. Yep. Wonderful. Yep. We're doing the shell. This this part of the shell. The scoops? The, sc the light part? <laughs> They're scoops. Scoots. Like cute, like scute. The scute yeah. part. Okay. I'll never forget it now. Nope. Never. So uh, we're going to use like kind of like a brownish color for the shell. So that's where you're going to want to mix your orange and your black or maybe a little bit of your blue. They are gonna have, a, it is gonna have a little bit of a green tint to it, that's okay. When you're mixing it on your palette, they might, fr it might freak you out because you're like, this looks really green, but on the paper, it's gonna be fine. It's gonna look right. This is the worst. Where do you find a tortoise with no legs? Where you left it. <laughs> <laughs> Get serious, you I'm guys. Yeah. Start with if we're gonna get through this painting yeah, at all, <laughs> listen. This is a three-hour class. You're in for a treat. 
Okay, so I mixed a little bit of brown on my palette and then I'm gonna just start with these big chunks at the top. And so what I like to do is I'll do like the base color, like the bottom part, this kind of brown. And then I'll use water to blend it up, similar to what we did in our warm up, because I want the top part to be the lighter value. And then it gets darker at the bottom. And then while it's still wet, I'm gonna wanna drop in some funky cool colors. So you're gonna wanna do like darker browns. You can do pure tiger orange or orange. You can do some yellow. But we just want, I mean, you guys have seen like that tortoise um, shell stuff on like sunglasses and you know what I'm talking about, how it, how it has darks and lights. So shells have a, a great variation in value and color. So don't be afraid to play with those and to really like just have fun with what is going to happen in each shell because it's just going to do its own thing. Uh, for the colors, I mixed the orange and the black together to get kind of this dark brown and then I just dropped in colors of pure uh, orange and yellow. Another really fun technique that you can do too that I like to do is while it's still wet like this, I will actually just drop in pure water and it will make the color spread out from that water drop and create a new texture and it's super cool. So you can do th drop that in there. Is there a teachable moment? Yeah. How do you make brown? How do you make brown? Brown is dark orange, so you can mix brown, brown. <laughs> you can mix black with orange or complementary colors. So complementary colors are what's across from each other on the color wheel. I actually think I have a color wheel in one of these drawers maybe? Yes. So if this is our color wheel, whatever is across from it is its complement, which means when you, mixes it, when you mix it together, it's gonna get muddy. Um, and this is a great way to mix super dark colors like blacks or browns and just get some like deep, colorful, dark colors, which is sometimes better than using straight out of the bottle because it has a little bit more color depth to it. Okay, so keep on going with your chunks on your shell. Oh no, my turtle's bleeding into the water. That's okay, just suck up that extra stuff. Yeah, if your water is still a little bit wet and you hit the edge, then it could bleed out. But um, sometimes that happens to me and I just am like, that's kind of cool. Don't like, get like mad. Like he's been harpooned. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, not like that at all. I don't think their blood is brown. Yeah. What color is the soup after you make it? I don't, I don't make soup. Not turtle soup anyways. Michael, you're the one that talked about eating them. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm a curious person. <laughs> <laughs> don't ever be sorry for that. All right, Pam and Diane, I think I got it better. Tell me if I did. Is everything okay? The, the front cam is a little blurry, but I'm looking on a tiny little screen. Oh. <laughs> so it looks great over here. Oh, did I say if your water is wet? I Oh, I guess the water. <laughs> the water on your paper, not the water in your cup. Maria, you're funny. Okay. So I'm getting these really funky spots by dropping in these colors, and I love it. Ooh, that's Fun. cool. Yes, really embrace these different textures and wonky things that you're going to get. It's the best part. It's what makes it yours. Ooh, that looks really pretty. Like a, like one of those, like pottery. I've seen pottery. That oh, looks yeah, yeah, yeah. Do we keep going on all the little shells? Or we yeah, so we do the top, and then you're going to start doing the shells along the bottom the skewts. Skew. Skew. Super skew. So skew. So I'm just like kind of dropping in color and then maybe spreading it a little bit and then I go back and I drop in the orange and I drop in the yellow. Uh, Sharon says it's in focus. 
I know some people it might look out of focus. It's just um, like the streaming quality is bad. Oh yeah, maybe you're the streaming yeah, quality is bad. Internet has so. problems sometimes. It is kind of raining outside. Yeah, it's. We've been having trouble at internet at our house all day today. We've had to like talk to our kids. I know what. Just kidding. That's I love so my weird. kids. <laughs> okay. <laughs> no, they've had to talk to us. Okay, I'm doing the dark at the bottom. Gosh, these are so great. And this is where it's cool because this is where it's super hard to replicate this, right? Like the painting I did in the video and the painting I'm doing here and the painting I did originally, like they all look different from each other because watercolor always has this sense of accidental art that I love. It's really one of my favorite things about it. But that's also what stresses people out about it. So you just got to embrace it. Cajun Crafts, this is her first time. She has more questions about the box. She says, when a package is sent out, do you get all of the month's projects at once? Yes, so, we, so our subscription box, how it works is it will ship out and it has all four of the kits in the box. So you'll have everything you need for all the projects we do in that month. And also a little postcard that we paint for somebody every month. It's the best part. It's seriously like a present. You get this beautiful box with the paints and the and the pictures and We need that. a check-in. Oh, we need a check-in? Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, we're gonna start with Natalie. Okay. Can you see her painting over there? Or I can move her painting to the overhead. Yeah, let's do that. Let's okay. Do that. All right. So glad I taped mine down. <laughs> well, Michael can get yours from there. Okay, we are looking at Natalie's, and this is looking awesome. I think her watercolor texture is super interesting, and I like how there's these touches of it back here, because to me that makes me feel like the water is also kind of going up behind the turtle and coming up out of it. I think her shell textures are great. If anything, I might just add another layer of dark right at that bottom, because we want it to be clear that this top part is a lighter value, and then down there it's darker. Okay. And that's just because the shell is rounded. So because it's rounded, the top part is gonna have more of a highlight, and then as it goes down and around, it's gonna get darker because it's turning away from us. Okay. But it's looking great. Thank you. Sorry, Misty. You're Misty, fine. you're next. All right. Okay, yeah, while we're switching. Yeah. Um, someone wants to know if you're gonna carry other next step up brushes like uh, sable or squirrel hair. Oh yeah, yeah. We we are. We've actually this last weekend we were just looking at a bunch of different materials, and we are going to start stocking our store with different papers and two watercolor paints and different brushes, so you guys can really play with different materials and see what works for you because everybody paints with different stuff and is gonna have their own. Uh, preference. Okay, speed round. Two questions. One. <laughs> yeah. How many drafts of these do you do before you put them up? How many? Like the turtle. How many times you paint the turtle before it became a project? Okay, it depends. So the sea turtle for the project, that was actually the first time I painted it and I was just like, bam, I got that one. We are doing a jar of tulips in April and I'm not kidding, I probably painted a jar six times before I got the final one. So it really just depends on the project. Sometimes it's like one or two, sometimes it's like six or seven. Last one, speed round, when's the paint for Mackenzie? Paint for the Mackenzie, we are going to release the tutorial, quick little, I think it's like a 10 minute paint along video Thursday. So we'll post that Thursday. Okay, great job. So this is Misty's project. This is looking awesome with the color textures. Do you see that swoop there? I love that. It's yeah. almost like the flippers are creating a like current in that water. That's gorgeous. I think you have great textures going on here. I like that there's a highlight at the top. Um, if anything, just when you're filling these in, make sure you keep that also. In tighter areas, it is harder to have that value change, but try and do that also in the smaller skews. Okay, Michael, can you change the camera to Jenny's? Yep, I can get Jenny's right here. <laughs> Mine's kind of a little sunshiny turtle. Sunshiny? It's more Hold yellow on, than brown. Okay, and... And he has a leak right here. There we go. <laughs> All right, Jenny's up. Jenny's turtle is leaking, his, but that's okay. His vent. 
<laughs> it's a leaky vent. <laughs> so if this happens to you, there's a couple things that you can do. One, you can leave it and not be mad about it. And I promise you, no one will actually care at all. Um, another thing you can do is you could actually change the whole shape of your turtle shell. So you could actually just make your turtle shell taller. Does that make sense? Oh, yeah. And go across and do that. Or you could go back and do another layer of blue That's over the top here. That's kind of what I thought I'd do is the blue. So any one of those options are great. They should work. Just don't let things like this get you down because they happen to everybody, even people who have been painting forever. Um, I think this is looking really great. I love the different textures in here from you doing those water droplets. Um, I might want to see a little bit darker value on the bottom of these, but for the most part, they're looking good. And maybe shape these a little bit more because you see how they kind of have like a... Yeah. I kind of want to keep them... More square. More square. Okay. I can do that. <laughs> Diaper blowout. <laughs> Ew. Diaper blowout. That reminds me of when my children were babies. Let's not go there. Rayanna says, Rayanna says, I can't believe I'm painting this. It's looking so pretty. Oh, Rayanna. I'm is, glad you like it. That's the best thing ever, Rayanna. That is the best. Thanks for saying that. Now, I, I actually feel that way every time I paint. I'm just like, this really looks like what I thought yeah. it was. I mean, it's not the best in the world, but it's not the worst either. And yeah. it actually looks like what I intended. I think that's when people share their paintings in our Facebook group, um, Let's Make Our Watercolor, they're always like, I did this and it's not perfect, but you know what? You can tell it's a bird. And I'm like, that's awesome. Just having that positive attitude where it's like, it's not about perfection. Mm -hmm. It's just about doing it. Now also, if you can paint fast, which I'm comfortable doing because I've been painting a long time, I also challenge you to paint fast because it teaches you to make decisions quick. But you can do multiples of these little scutes at the same time. You get them all wet. And if you're working fast, then you can go back all at one time when you drop in the dark on all of them. And it spreads. And then you go in and you add the drops of the orange or the yellow, and they'll spread. Susan says it looks cute. <laughs> Susan, thank you. Fun. That was great. Molly would be loving this. Yeah, she would. Oh, Susan says, uh, fact, sea turtles don't have teeth. Hey. Earlier she said they can hold their breath for two hours when they sleep. What? Yeah. <laughs> Natalie, me too. <laughs> you guys, I love all you dearly. These look so great. They do look so great. Michael, you look so great. You stop that. <laughs> I'm allowed to say that. <laughs> Me too. He makes me say it like every day. <laughs> Misty has to tell him twice a day. Yeah. <laughs> Michael, you keep look my, great. To keep my self esteem. You're like, I will not film you unless you tell me how great I look. <laughs> okay. Yes. <sighs> yes. Okay. Then the very last thing that we are going to do on this shell, and you can kind of see it in our... Um, example right here is you know how the shells they kind of like go out and then there's a thickness and they go what back in it's just paused oh yeah it's okay i can still see comments as they come oh, okay so what we're doing here is we're kind of painting the side as the shell kind of goes out and then we do leave kind of like this white edge and that's because the shell itself is thick and will have an edge to it and we're just going to leave that white so we're basically so you can kind of see here that there's like this thick part in the middle and that's going to be kind of like the edge part so i'm going to kind of like take this like a, a medium value to a light value brown and kind of like move it around the edge here and it so might just, just under the little scoots just under the little scoots it might bleed into a couple of them that's okay it's just a very soft wash light wash I guess I should say you want to leave some of the white that's what you're saying right? yeah because we'll and we'll I'll go over that when we do the the shadows next but this is kind of like the part of the shell where it kind of like curves down 
So it's just like coming down at you. Like, do we do it up here on the shoulder? Uh, yeah, you're gonna do it up here just a little, just like a little bit, okay. kind of like to there. And remember, our outlines are guidelines. If you go around it or if you paint over it, it's okay. That's okay. We don't want it to feel blocky, which sometimes happen when we use the outlines because then we look at them as like coloring books and we don't want that because we want to have kind of blending. It's okay. It's fine. It's okay. You can suck it up if you want. Okay. Sarah, I know I'm talking a lot, but I think this one's important. Okay. Emily L. wants to know, she wants to send a card to Mackenzie, but she doesn't get the box. Can she still send her a card? Yes. So if you are not a subscriber, but you still want to participate in Let's Make Art Matter, first of all, you're amazing and I love you. Second of all, you just email us, hello at letsmakeart.com. We will send you her mailing address and you can uh, mail your own postcard to her. We don't post it on our website because we just feel like that's just personal information, but we will um, message it to you if you are interested in sending your own postcard. It's seriously my favorite part. Me too. It's the greatest. I mean, just when you think about, you know, whoever it is that's struggling receiving thousands yeah. of, of hang in there, we love you, we love we're you. thinking about you. And just like hand painted little things, and they don't even know them. I think that's the best part where it's just Amazing. like we can kind of like, as a community, just like rally around people. It's the best, it's the greatest thing. Okay, we are going to move on to step number three. We're gonna start doing our shadows on our turtle. So first of all, you guys are doing awesome, congratulations. Um, okay, so the reason why we're gonna wanna do our shadows first is because we do have a lot of like textures, like the spots on top or the scales on top. We wanna put shadows underneath them to give it form. If we were to just put the scales right on top, it's gonna look flat because what's underneath it is just a straight white value. So if we put some shadows and shading in there, it's gonna give our turtle some dimension and have it look a little bit more three-dimensional. So um, you're going to take your six. And I, what I kinda did for this color is I actually grabbed a little bit of blue and I mixed it in with the kind of like light brown that I have going on. So it's, it is kind of a greenish color. And if it's too green, um, you're gonna wanna add a little bit of more blue in there. But it's gonna be about, hopefully you guys can see that. And it's just gonna be really light. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna add some water in there to lighten that up. And then I'm gonna take this shadow and I'm gonna do a shadow right here, like right underneath the neck of the sea turtle. I kind of outlined where that shadow is and kind of where it should end, but don't fill it in exactly and leave it. We want it to blend out. So the darkest part is gonna be right underneath the neck. That's where it's gonna be its darkest. And then you take a little bit of water and blend that out. And you can use, I'm, I'm gonna grab actually a little bit of the brown and tiny bit of black for right underneath that part. And then you're just gonna transition <laughs> it out. Mine blended like hair, he has like hair <laughs> So even if your blending goes past the outline, that is okay. As long as it feels like a natural smooth transition, it's fine. So see how far out I'm blending? Even though on my outline, this is kind of where I ended, mm -hmm. I'm going out to there because I just want it to be a smooth transition. But you, and that's just because I lost a little bit of control at the top, but you guys just, just start, blend it out. Yeah, I would blend out past a little bit that line. <laughs> So we have the shadow, and you can see already that by putting that shadow in, it's, it's pushing that front flipper, dorsal flipper, uh, back a little bit. No, we also put a shadow on the chin, Natalie. You got it. You're doing great. You're just a little step ahead. <laughs> okay, the next shadow we're gonna put in is on the belly of the turtle. So it's gonna be kind of like a greenish brown color. So 
So you're going to put that color in first and you're going to softly blend it out, but try and keep a, th a thin white line in between your shadow and your shell because we want that to act as the edge of our shell. And it goes right against the water? Yes. So I'm doing mine right against the water um, if, yours, if you're seeing that your water is bleeding a lot into this painting, what, another thing that you can do that I will sometimes do is you just leave the thinnest white line in between. So then it's not actually touching. And I'm going to add a little bit of like a slightly darker, I want to do like a little bit darker value right on that tummy. And actually like the bottom of Turtles have the bottom part of that shell, right? Because the shell goes Someone all the way. The name of it. I think it was, yeah. Underbelly. The underbelly of the plastron. turtle. The plastron of the With turtle. I like the armpit. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to have that kind of same, um, uh, like, uh, lights and darks, like we do on this top part of the shell. So it's going to be kind of like. Here's a little, and here's a little, just like a little hint of it. People are talking about painting with their kids. Mm. Cajun says that she has uh, boys 25 to 18, and she doesn't think they'd want to paint with them. Let me tell you, Mind you, I was a teenage boy, and if my mom asked me, I would be thrilled. So go ahead and ask them. And actually, now, yeah. Yeah, I have three boys, 18, 20, and 22, and they all love to paint. And then they post their paintings yeah, together. Like it's it's so great. Occasionally and stay up late painting things. That makes Saturday, me so happy. Saturday night. <laughs> Saturday night painting. It's a cool yeah. thing to do. It is. Okay, so I did the underbelly. Now right underneath this back shell on the, what was this flipper called? Honey? Ventral. Ventral. The <laughs> ventral flipper. I don't know. It's how they what they call fish parts. I don't know if it translates to turtles. What if you were wrong this entire time? Somebody let me know. Okay, so I'm putting a little bit of a shadow on just where that shell is meeting that rear flipper, and it's gonna smooth transition out. And the very edge of the flipper is gonna be white. So this part I'm keeping white, and then it's, and then it's like a gradual transition into that shadow. Or it's all one color. <laughs> or it is all one color. <laughs> or you can, yeah, you can lighten that up. Jenny, I never moved my camera off your turtle, and it looks awesome. I'm going to show you. Oh my God. I'm sure you <laughs> <your turtle. laughs> Look at it that. It does turtle. look good. It looks great. It's beautiful. She's a woman of many talents, that one. That's true. So true. <laughs> if you didn't know, she's like. The queen quilter of all time. <laughs> Those of you who aren't quilters watching. That's true. Well, you're you going to have to teach me how to sew. Happy to. I'm going to go, I want to go on one of your lives. You can like, teach me how to sew. Actually, no, to scratch that. <laughs> <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> Never mind. I'm not good at sewing. Okay. That's Don't okay, but I'm that. willing to try it. It's a skill. It's, practice. it's practice. Never practiced. I just got to start. That's all it is. I gotta take my own advice. Okay, so we did the shadow on our uh, ventral, ventral? Back yeah. flipper. Back flipper, thank you. Black, <laughs> back flipper, the, the farthest one on the front flipper, and now on the very, this very front flipper, the one that we see the whole thing of, I'm gonna do a soft shadow kind of at the tip of it, and then right, um, where, and I actually have it kind of outlined right here. You see how it kind of went like, k -k 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 -k. Yeah. that's the shat, that's a shadow part two. So this is like the shadow coming out from the shell. And then you're gonna softly blend those out. And when I mean softly, I guess what I mean is like, you don't wanna like take your paintbrush and go across the entire flipper because we do wanna leave some of that white underneath. So you're just, when you blend out, you're just making small brush strokes. So it's just slightly moving instead of going across the entire thing. Morgan, you can find Jenny Doan. She is the humble queen of the 
Missouri Star Quilt Company, the Earth's largest distributor of quilting fabric. <laughs> Go ahead and check that out because it's, it's a little thing that we do around here. I also do a tutorial. She does. She tutorial does. Also. It, gets a, it gets a couple views also. Just a few. <laughs> So we do that at the top of this one and the bottom? The top and the bottom. And the reason why we want to do it at the top and the bottom is when you think of the flipper of a turtle, it's actually rounded, right? And <laughs> you, it's kind of like, it's, so it's kind of like this. Wait, I got to put it on. Okay. On. <laughs> so it's kind of like this. <laughs> so it's going around and they like. Nice. I feel like I know exactly what you, you mean. You know exactly what I mean, right? So, and the reason why we want to shadow this is we want to make it clear this is far away, the front part is coming out at us, and then the back part is going back in. And by shadowing the top and the bottom, it will automatically give us that rounded shape that we're looking for, that they're not like this. They're like Girl, this. You are an ageless beauty. <laughs> Keep that up. Do you like it when there I like it? it. <laughs> Turtles don't do this. They round. <laughs> All right. The, the SNL skit when, um, oh shoot, I forgot his name. He, he used to play like a turtle man. Like, turtle man. Uh -huh. <laughs> I don't, I don't oh, know. Carrie, 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 Carrie. Yeah, Danny Carvey. Look it up. I'm not it's turtle enough for the Look it up. Club. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Misty's doing it right now. I don't need to look it up. How okay. How are you? So then we have one more shadow we need to do, which is just the chin, the underside of the turtle's head there. I have a soft little outline there. That one is gonna be kind of more of a bluish, blue green. We're gonna be right here, right here. The chin. We're doing the chin. When I said we're gonna do the chin, mm -hmm. I meant we're gonna paint the chin. Mm -hmm. <laughs> just kidding. You know, there's a lot happening. Missy, it's distracted. only it's only because I like you that I was able to say that. I appreciate that. Sweet GGV says, Dear Sarah, I am nine and I love your spirit and you're such a good teacher. Oh, I thank love you. That. I automatically love her too. Yes. Yeah. She wins. You're our favorite. <laughs> okay, so it's just this really soft kind of blue green shadow right on that chin of that turtle underneath its head. It sounded like I was going to say more, but I stopped. That was the end. Okay. And you guys are doing awesome. I know with this turtle, there are a lot of steps, but if you just stay with it, you keep on painting, it's going to be great. Okay. And that was step three. We are more than halfway done with this painting. It's looking great. Everybody's is looking so good. Oh, I missed one shadow part, sorry. On the back of the head where it's meeting that shell, there's an, a little shadow there too. So just kind of like right here. And then you're just gonna softly blend that up. Because that head is going underneath that, that shell. So it's going like the shell's on top of it, so it, the head's coming out from it, and so we have to have a shadow there to show what is on top and what's coming out. And softly blend. And softly blend, just like so. Okay, wonderful job. Now we are going to move on to the, what did I call this? Oh no. Fin, well, now we know it's not scutes because that's this. It's a, it's a scale. Is that it? That doesn't seem well, the cool. whole thing is the flipper, but what's the dots on it? I still vote for freckles. Spots? Freckles. They said that those are scutes too. They are scutes. I think they're just like uh, smaller ones. Like a what is that? Chitin, a chitinized little bump. It's like a wart. Oh. We all know what chitinized. Is. I like know. It's like it's like a chitin. I'm like I've never heard that before in my life. <laughs> no, I don't know this term. Linda is a new member, and she wants to know where you get this outline. Oh, Linda! If you go on letsmakeart.com, you click 2019 kits. You click February. You'll see the sea turtle, and there is a button there that says outline. Click on that little square that says outline. It will show up as a PDF that you can then print right there from your computer. So if you have um, 
like your own painting supplies and you just want to paint with us, please do and just get this outline and come join us every Tuesday night. Okay, Maria says scutes, scales, and spots are all the same thing. Hmm, okay. Well, that makes it easy. I believe her. Maria, I believe you. <laughs> I choose to believe. <laughs> <laughs> I believe. Okay, so I'm mixing like a dark brown for the scales that I'm gonna put on the flipper of my turtle. Now, one thing that I want you guys to keep in mind is you wanna make sure that your this is dry before you start putting on those scales or spots. Um, because if it is wet and you try and put those down, it will bleed out and we kinda wanna keep these a little bit more sharp and defined. So, use your number two. Use your two, switch over to your two. If you still wanna use your six and you feel comfortable making those smaller marks, you can. I'm gonna to switch to my two, it's a little bit easier. And I did not outline every single one of these scales on the flipper because that's excessive. And we can all make it our own, right? This is where we kinda of put our own touch on it. So I just kinda of start at the tail, like the end of the flipper and I work my way up. So I'm just gonna like start with kind of a funky rectangular shape and then I'll do another one and sometimes they kind of get rounded. And you're just gonna start, it's almost like, yeah, it's like uh, that kind of mosaic tile. Dryer. Oh, I can start on the back leg, can't I? Yeah, okay. so if your front one is not dry, you can go ahead and do that back one. Okay. We're doing a lot of little spots here, so wherever you can start, start. If your front is dry and your end on your flipper isn't, then start on the front. Maria, who gave us the nugget of knowledge that scoots, scales, and spots are the same. Yeah. We told her she's believable. She wants us to write a note for her kids because they never believe her. <laughs> yeah, isn't that the truth? Yeah. yeah right. <laughs> I'll write hers if she writes mine. Also, someone's name is Bilbo's Oreo, and I love that. That's really great. <laughs> I actually, my seven-year-old is the, in that stage where like everything I say, she just doesn't believe me. But it's like factual information that I, I'm like, what do you, she's like, no. That, Cause like, oh, she's starting to read. And she's like, what does that say? And I'll tell her and she's like, no. And I'm like, yes, it does. <laughs> what do you mean? No, like the, those are the letters and uh -oh, it's spelling that lost, word. We lost a little sound. Oh, we're back. We're back. Who knows? We're okay. Sound, let us know. We're good. I'm gonna check the battery. Okay, so you're just going to, so the spots, Jen asked what color are the spots again? I'm kind of doing a dark brown similar to what we were kind of doing for our shell. You can decide how dark you want it to be. I wouldn't go straight black. That's gonna to be too dark um, right on top of the flipper. Now the thing that's gonna be challenging is to try and keep these, um, little spots on here, different in shape. <laughs> <laughs> I think she just looked at mine. If mine's on the camera still, you can actually tell. Mine are like- Let's take a look at Jenny's. Little square blocks. There it is. So what you can do, so these, so yeah, these are pretty square, but what we can start doing is just kind of rounding some of them out. And it's okay if some of them touch, but you just want to start giving some of them a little bit of funky shape in them. Oh, okay. Because these I made funky and you said to square them up. Well, these ones we wanted to keep more square. <laughs> Look, mine are kind of all running together too. I've lost a lot of. That's okay. You can always go back in and do more layers. So some of these you can see like this looks kind of like an elbow. Like it has like a yeah. curve to it. They don't have to be perfectly square or rectangle. Okay, I'm trying. I'm trying. You're doing great. You're I just doing keep great. Making my squares bigger. <laughs> I said it's a quilted turtle. <laughs> there you go. You're using those fabric. What size do you always use? Three uh, cuts. Yeah. Ten inch squares. Ten inch squares. Sarah, you amateur. Five inch squares. What did you say, you amateur? <laughs> <laughs> I will admit that I am not a quilter, but I will learn. And if you want to make the edges of yours a little bit smaller, like on that very end of the flipper, and then kind of like the middle, you can make them thicker and then go thinner again. That's what I would do. So I, mine is a little bit smaller. These ones are going to get bigger. And then the ones kind of near the shoulder are going to get a little bit smaller again. Now, the other thing that you want to keep in mind besides um, like the shape of them is you want to keep look at like 
how thick the white part is between them because we do want a little bit of the white part in between them or the underneath part in between them to see that but if we have it too thick or too wide in between those scales then it almost becomes distracting so sometimes like I think I did it in the pre-recorded tutorial I painted these scales and then at the end I was like you know what they're too far apart that's not a big deal you just go in and thicken some up and kind of narrow up the space in between and that's going to be a little bit more true to what you would see It is strangely quiet right now. <laughs> well, the funny thing is someone told me, um, Jesse told me at NAMTA, and you guys will meet um, Jesse soon. She's a wonderful creative. Um, she was saying how we use different parts of our brain to talk and to create. So usually, like, when people talk, they're talking, and then once that paintbrush or pencil hits the paper, they just stop talking oh, because they're using a different part of their brain, and it's hard to transition back and forth. So that's why, like, usually when I'm doing detail work where it's, like, small, that's when I'll stop talking once I start painting. I think that's what's happening Sarah, here. Yeah. Stop painting. Look at the camera. This yeah. one. Yeah. Keely, 13, says she doesn't think she can do this. It looks too hard. She needs oh. some encouragement. Signed her mom. Keely, you can absolutely do this painting. I know when you look at something, you look at it and you think, I can never do that. But we break it down into steps. We'll guide you along every step of the way. And you just have to try. And you get better and better. And you get better and better. And here's the wonderful thing that we always forget with art. It's just a piece of paper. That's all it is. So don't be intimidated by it. And if you paint it and it's not exactly what you want, guess what? Do you know what I do when that happens, which it happens to me all the time? I just like rip it off and I throw it to the side, very dramatic like that. And then I just start again and it's great. And it's not a big deal, everybody does it. Now I would suggest leave, painting it and then leaving it till the morning. Yes. Because in the morning you come back and you go, you know what, that doesn't look so bad. <laughs> yes. I think I actually even said that in like the description when we announced this project. I was like, don't make a final decision until the next morning. It's always great to walk away from a painting and come back to it. I can vouch that she does in fact throw it. Because <laughs> I clean them all up. Michael's just walking behind me and picking up these <laughs> papers that I've just tossed about. The thing about it, though, is when you look at artists like Monet, Picasso, all those mm -hmm. different, I mean, they're all, they all do different stuff. Yeah. And everybody's is different. Yours isn't going to look like anybody else's because it's yours. And it's not supposed to look like the projects that we're painting, even though we're all painting in Sea Turtle, they're different from each other, as in they're gonna have their own personalities and their quirks, and that's what we celebrate in art. Susan said she keeps the paintings she hates so she can see her growth. That is a great idea, Susan. This is going well. I don't think you should hate any painting. I, th I think it's... Well, there are probably some. I think it's I okay. That back. I th as long as you don't get mad at yourself for them, it's okay. Like if you could sit, laugh, and be like, oh, that turned out terrible, then that's, that's okay. But if you're like beating yourself up for it, then that's when you need to like reevaluate some things, you know? Oh, somebody said rainbow sea turtle coming soon. That would be cool. That, you know what? That's what we should have done. Do the kids have enough supplies to do it twice if you mess up? Yep. Yes. Yeah, there's usually enough paint in there where you can paint it a, probably, I mean, how many times can you paint it, do you think, out of those kits? At least, like, well, two I or three. I paint everyone at least twice, and yeah. I still have stuff left. Yeah. Yeah, we put extra in there for you. And we do put two, in the individual kits, we put two sheets of paper per. But if you're learning, I would suggest just buying a full pad of paper, and that way you can just play and you're not limited by paper. Well, and honestly, when, you know, one of these, you mm -hmm. can use one of these mm -hmm. a lot and use the back. I mean, even though the back isn't exactly the right kind, it's for practicing. Yeah, you absolutely can use the know. back, especially the back with a warm-up. Yeah, I do the warm-ups on a lot of the same. And you can use your butcher tray again if you just use a little more water. 
what? revive your paint. Oh, yeah. Yes, you can paint. revive your paint. You can let it dry and then you just re-wet it and it comes right back up. It's really great. Deborah says, what if my spots are too funky? I think you're doing it right. These are funky spots. Rick James spots. Is Rick oh. James funky? Oh my gosh, Rick James is the king of fun. <laughs> oh. <laughs> well, how far do you go? I thought, I thought my, I've lost my. I kind of went up to the shoulder here where that like shell kind of corners off. Oh, like, okay. right there. And I'm gonna go back in and thicken some a little bit in some areas where I'm seeing a lot of like white. This and is sweet. Vonda says, Keely, you have to practice. I'm 58 and I just started to do watercolors. Never be afraid to try. Oh, that's great. Good job, Vonda. Good job. Do you know, honestly, um, we, when we took all the kids when we were at the cabin at the lake this summer, mm -hmm. um, I brought paint brushes and paints for everybody and we all painted and um, Misty's little Ashlyn was so sad because um, hers didn't look just like everybody else's because mm -hmm. Ashlyn is eight. And, uh, She's 10. Or 10. Yes. And, um, and when, um, and then somebody posted, I love the one with the blue sky, you mm -hmm. know, and that was Ashes because Aww. Ashes filled in the whole sky and she did it. And it was just like, it's so sweet because mm -hmm. they just, you know, they don't realize how, how, you know, it's, it's just not about how it is. It's just about trying. And a lot of the times the things that we notice as like glaring mistakes in our own paintings, it doesn't even, it doesn't sh um, register to mm -hmm. other people. It's us that are super critical of our own work. So that's why when I say like, don't get mad about it, it's because most of the time it's, people don't notice those things. It's just because you created it that you notice those times where you felt like you've messed up. Okay, this part is time consuming. You guys are doing great. I'm getting close. I think I got my two flippas. Just started making oh, really large. I just finished the <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't know. Uh, yeah. It's fine. <laughs> I'm way behind the group. Okay. So I'm just gonna just on this other front flipper. So this is um if if this is our flipper and the scales are on the front, on the back, they're not really there. But because it's a three-dimensional thing, we are going to see like a hint of it like on the edges. Show the back of your flippers. <laughs> so here's my, here's there my flippers is. there. Are okay, the fronts? <laughs> are the fronts of the flippers? From, no, yeah, these the are back. the fronts. And then this is the back. <laughs> Sarah, you don't have to do it just for these So the back of the flippers are going to be a lighter color. So that's why we did this shadow. And then we're essentially just going to leave that there because it's like a, a light tan since there's nothing there. And then on the edges here, like just on the corner, I'm going to just put a hint of those scales kind of like it's almost like it's slightly wrapping around, but not fully wrapping around. So it's just the hints of these kind of funky shapes. And you're going to do that a little bit on the top part, too. Danison wants a flipper dance. <laughs> Michael, you can go ahead and do that. Yeah, I wish you guys could see it. <laughs> so it's just kind of like right on that top round and right on that corner. Just a little hint that there are scales on the other side of it. And then there is a little bit of scales on the head of the turtle. Now, don't be afraid to drop in some strong colors of orange or yellow. I know it sounds scary, but I love, I mean, look how great the coloring is on this shell just from dropping in those very vibrant colors. So even on some of these small ones, you can do that too, especially on the head. You guys keep working. I got a story while you work. Okay. So we just moved to Missouri from California and I had never been to Missouri, and so I YouTubed Missouri. I just put that in, and one of the first videos that popped up was a guy who, who caught a snapping turtle and was 
cooking it to eat it. What? Wow. <laughs> so I was like, all right, here we go. Here we go. Let's do <laughs> this, this is thing. our home. This is what we got to do. It turned out awesome, though. It's really cool. Here. There was a snapping turtle in the pool. Oh no. Nah. The snapping turtles are mean. They are so You know, mean. if you have them in your pond, you want to get them out of your pond. That's why they look. Wait, what kind of turtle is this, do you think? Michael? <laughs> Can I see the, um, <laughs> the um, outline? Oh, yeah. That's a, that's a sea turtle. Let's go ahead and call it a leatherback, but I don't know. Oh, okay. Do you know the different types of turtle? I know. Well, a lot. your wonderful fans were naming largest and smallest ones earlier. Oh, dang, I missed that. But let's go ahead and say leatherback because that one sounds good. Okay. Turtle soup. Oh. Susan just said turtle soup. Okay. Rude. We are anti turtle soup. Against the cooking of turtles. Susan's 90 year, 92 year old mother watches with her and paints along with her. <laughs> oh, oh that's awesome. That's so great. Actually, um, my, a lot of my family members started painting since I started doing this and it's so great. They, they paint along and they send me their projects at the end and it's just been this really great way to connect with a, a lot of my family and friends that, that never have done art before and I love it. Oh, Michael, you're wrong. Maria says, not a leatherback. Green sea turtle. Or... I don't know. We Maria. Maria, you're right. We believe you, so. Okay, I did my spots on my, the scales on the head, on the flippers. Um, you're almost there, Misty. You're doing great. If you're not quite there yet, you're going to be there soon. You're doing awesome. We're moving on to the very last step. It's just those details. Now, the details we kind of have to do like in little sections here because sometimes we have to wait for things to dry. But the reason why I always leave the last step details instead of like just the eyeball is because I always encourage you to take a step back from your painting before you finish it and look at it from across the room or take a photo of it and then look at it, but just step away from it for a little bit if you can. And that just, um, you're, you're able to see it as a whole picture when you're farther away from it. So um, if you are able, take a moment to do that. And we're gonna go into um, finishing off the mouth and the eyeball. So with the eyeball, it actually has kind of like a brown area around it. So I'm gonna just take this brown color and go on the under part of the eyelid. And this part isn't outlined, but you can do it. I know that you can do that. So I'm just gonna go around the bottom and then kind of go around the top, but when you get to the eyelid, I'm not gonna totally fill it in across because we want to keep the form of the eyeball itself, that roundness. If I were to paint this all one the same brown color, same value, it would flatten it. And we wanna be clear that there is an eyeball underneath that eyelid and so it has a roundedness to it. So you're gonna have a lighter value in the middle of the eye in this like eyelid thing. So you see how it's darker on the edges and then in the middle it's lighter? That is what we're looking for. Okay, so consensus is it is a hawksbill sea turtle. In okay. Hawaii they call them, I'm gonna butcher this, Honu? Honu. H-O-N-U. Okay, thanks you guys. So we kind of did the eyelid now we're gonna wait they do have kind of freckles on their eyelids we're not gonna do that yet because it's too wet we want those freckles to stay sharp and we're not gonna do the black part of the eye yet because we want that to stay sharp also oh we need a we'll, close -up we'll do a close-up of the eye so my line is much thinner my eyeliner is much thinner than yours so what I did can they see that should I move it closer? To don't, don't move at all. Okay, I'm not moving at all. <laughs> well, paint. Okay. Paint. <laughs> okay. Paint I'm like, freeze. So, 
I'll, I'll just do it again really quick. So you're going to do a brown underneath the bottom part of the eye. You're going to go around the eye. And then you're going to do a lighter value in the middle of the eyelid. We don't want to keep it that same dark color because we want it to have that form. And so just by having a lighter value in that eyeball, and if you, if you paint people or if you're looking at people, it's the same thing with people. Around my eye, it's shaded because that's my eye socket. On the top of my eyelid, it is a lighter value, and that's because my eyeball underneath it is causing that to bulge. And that's how you get that form. And it's such a small detail, but it's just paying attention to those smaller little changes that you can um, have your paintings look a little bit more realistic. Okay, uh, now while we're waiting for that to dry, I'm gonna take a little bit of black and I'm gonna put in the mouth. So the mouth, I'm just gonna do a nice little thin line right on this mouth here. And um, it's always fun to, to like paint the eyes and the mouths of the animals because that's actually where they get their like expressions and their personalities. So um, to get a thin line, I'm picking, I picked up some black paint and then I actually swoop my paintbrush back and forth on my tray. It's gonna pinch my bristles together so it's a nice little point. And then I'm just going to do a nice little line right there. Now, if you want it to smile, you can have that line. So this is kind of frowning, right? It's going down. And then if you want it to smile, you can just pick that line back up. It's so funny to me. The ex there. Everybody's expressions <laughs> are always so different. So that's him with a little bit of a smirk. I gave him a smirk because I, I picked that line back up a little bit. But sometimes turtles are serious. It's okay if yours looks a little irritated. <laughs> we all do okay and then what I always like to do when I put in mouths is just get my brush like the dampest wet so so very like little wet that I'll hit it hit it off the cup and then I'll hit it on my paper towel a couple of times so it's just barely damp and then I softly blend out the black line just a little bit just to soften it so it's not just such a hard line in the middle of like a white area. Underneath? Yeah, underneath it. And the reason why we wanna do it underneath it is because usually things underneath are shadowed because usually the light source is coming from above. Above. Okay, and if your eyeball is dry, mine's dry. I'm gonna do the black part of the eye. So I'm just gonna pick up some black. Now, in the outline, there's like the tiniest little white circle in that black eye that we're gonna avoid and not color in. So usually I'll outline it first and then work around it. Everyone needs to think of your turtle names. Oh yeah. We always gotta name our turtle. My turtle looks so chill. <laughs> like just so like. You're doing great. Where's the dot supposed to be? The dot's there, yeah. That one yep. or over here? There, where you have it. Okay. Sarah, I want your turtle to be named Hilo. Hilo? All right, I'm cool with that. Yellow Hattie. And then um, we're gonna do the little brown little freckles on the eyelid. Great. <laughs> I love your turtle, Natalie. <laughs> you guys will see, you'll see it. Okay, so I'm just gonna do a couple little like freckly dots. They're nice and tiny on the eyelid. I'm gonna use a nice dark brown. So just like do, 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 just around it. And then you can kind of see it on the outline. We kind of see the other eye, but it's like the side of it because it's on the other side of the head. So I just did like a little round edge just right there, just like the tiniest little, little circular mark right on the edge of that eyeball to show that like there is something on that other side. 
but it's turning away from us. It's on the other side. We can't see it clearly. And what I like to do, and it just depends on your turtle. So my eye is pretty tiny. I don't know if I would need to do this part, but if that white glare is very, a little bit bigger on yours and it's super white, sometimes what I'll do is when the black around it is totally dry, I'll take my paintbrush that's softly like a little bit damp and just do one quick swoop over it to make it a gray. And then that way it's not like a piercing white, it's like a soft glare, kind of like what I did here. So you see how that little white spot is not totally white, it's just a gray. It just softens that. So um, I don't know if I need to do that with mine though because it's so tiny. How about mine? I would do, I maybe would do it with yours, just a soft little swipe. It's just like one or two little shh, shh just, okay. to, just to kind of, because sometimes the white of the paper can be too bright. So it's just to kind of like chill it out a little bit. I said your turtle looks like he has a mustache. Mind us? Yeah, but his mouth has got that little <laughs> swoop of the mustache. Yeah, totally. And uh, I'm just going to softly, I'm just going to blend out some of these spots right here because I want a little bit more color on the head of my turtle. Because I'm like that, I like a little bit of color. But you guys can choose to do that if you like that contrast. Yeah, that looks good. Other turtle names, we've got Frankfurt, Squirt. <laughs> Bowser. Bowser. Bowser's the oh turtle on Mario. <laughs> <laughs> Franklin. Oh, Franklin. Okay. Okay. I think we ought to. What What I'd like you to do is look at mine and tell me any place I can improve. Okay, great. We can do that for sure. Oh, please. I feel like I might. My shadows might need to be a little darker. Jenny, can you push your cup up a smidge? Yeah. Oh, sorry. That way. Okay, go. Okay, uh, I think Jenny's looks great. I love the texture here. I think you're right. I think you can probably do another layer of shadow here and on the belly okay. a little bit. And maybe even once this dries, maybe sharpen up these spots that we blended out a little bit. Okay. And also we can thicken, we can thicken up our shell port because like in between those lines are nice and thin. See okay. how nice and thin? And then this gets a little bit too thick down here. So I would maybe widen these smaller scoots a little oh, okay. bit to narrow in that those white chunks. Okay, perfect. Let me work on that a minute. Okay. I can should I do the overhead for the rest of them, honey? Yeah. Okay. Okay. So we have Missy's here. She has some great textures on her shell. Like, look at that. I know that you were mad when that happened a little bit, but I think that's so cool. It turned out good. Super, super cool. I love it so much. So, um, <laughs> he has a cool expression also. He <laughs> um, <laughs> does. So the only thing I would suggest, I would maybe do one other layer of shadow right here because this kind of bled a little bit, so this is all one value, this uh -huh. chunk. So maybe do another shadow here and here, and then thicken these up a little bit. Right here, the space feels a little okay, but in between here, that space is just a little wide. too wide. Yeah. So just thicken up those sections, and then I think you're good to go. Okay. Maybe do another little shadow there too. Okay, cool. Thank you. Natalie, you ready? I'm still working on the the little spots. Oh, okay. Oh my gosh, this looks great. Yeah. <laughs> okay, I love how you actually blended these out. I like that some of them are still sharp, but there's like this soft color going on and how you still left white spaces in there. I think that's really nice. Um, same thing, maybe thicken the shell up a little bit here so the white in between them isn't so wide. But what I what you did on here that I really liked is after you put in your um, scoots, you blended some of them out, which I think it is really nice. Like a really stark mosaic. Yeah, so, and that's a, and that's a great idea. So if the white, and you still left some of it highlight right in that middle, which is what you would wanna do. You would wanna blend out the top part where it's a little more shadowed, leave that highlight in the middle in between, and then blend out the bottom. And that's really nice, Natalie. I'm actually gonna do that on my own. It's looking great. So, what did I, what am I naming mine, honey? Hilo? Hilo. Hilo. My little Hilo, I'm actually gonna blend out, I'm gonna 
learn from Natalie and blend out these little scoots at the top a little bit. Oh yeah, that's so nice. But softly bent blending, which means very, very little wet brush and not going totally across, just little brush strokes. Yeah, that looks really nice. And because we did those shadows underneath too, like one of my favorite parts is actually this back flipper. I love that shadow underneath there, that transitions, and then we put those scoots on top. It just reads so realistic to me where I can tell that that is coming out from underneath that shell. And we still have a nice highlight right there on the edge. You guys ready to hold them up? No, I'm, I'm still thickening my lines. <laughs> We're ready. Okay. Let's do this. I think right. we go to that camera and you just span across. Right, I'm starting with Nat. Okay. So. so up, okay, we ready? Yes. All right. <laughs> tell tell it tell us if we need to like put it out or anything. Okay. 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 There's lovely Natalie's. <laughs> so There's great. Sweet Do you have I a love name? The water. Yeah, Natalie's water is so nice. Yeah. Sarah, turn yours more towards. Oh, me. sorry. There's pumpkin Sarah's. <laughs> <laughs> There's sugar Jenny's. Sugar. 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 You usually yeah. call me J Rock. J Rock. Okay. <laughs> Good job, you guys. You did it. You did the sea turtle. We're so turtly. <laughs> We're so turtly. We are turtly enough. We're turtly awesome. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, if you painted with us, first of all, you're so great, and thank you for doing that. And I would love to see your paintings. So I know it's so scary to do this. Posting your own work is like really terrifying because you're afraid that people will compare it to something else. But just like be brave and be bold and put yourself out there. And honestly, people love seeing art. They really do. And they appreciate it when people take the time to create. And it could inspire someone else to do this for themselves also. This is so important to take time out for you and make something and to learn. It's just the greatest thing in the world. So um, if you share it on Instagram, tag us in it. Let's go make art or hashtag let's make art. And we will take a look at that. We love looking at those. We also have a wonderful Facebook group. So if you're not comfortable sharing it, in your own personal accounts it's a closed group so if you just share it on there only the people in the group will see it and it's a very supportive community and we appreciate people on every part of their journey so if you're just starting out and you want to like get feedback or you just want to say I did this I'm putting myself out there it's a great place to be so that's called let's make art watercolor and um, I love it. It's huge now. It's almost 10,000 members. Oh my gosh. Yeah, awesome. it's taken off. It's wonderful. So um, you guys are so great. If you ordered the March subscription box, I sent an email earlier with a video about um, shipping times and what's going on with that. So hopefully you guys have that. If you did not get that email, um, talking about what's going on with those marches box, just uh, email hello at let's make art together. We'll make sure you get that. I'm also gonna post the video in our group. So then we're all on the same page and know what's going on. I think that's all I need to say. Look out for tomorrow, we're gonna release the treetop tutorial. The what? Treetop. Actually, I should show you. Yeah. Let me get it. Oh, that treetop. I know yeah. what you're talking about now. <laughs> I thought that was a spirea bush upside down. It's so beautiful. Treetop tutorial. So pretty. It's like so, so you're laying on the ground and looking I up at the treetop. Super fun. Yeah. Sarah, put it on top. Oh, look, here it is. Here's our treetop tutorial. So, so pretty. Um, that will be released um, tomorrow. Excited for that. That's it. You guys are amazing. Oh, oh, our Let's Make Art Matter postcard. Honey, do you see the, the postcard I painted? It's the jellyfish. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> it's gone. It just disappeared. Um, maybe in my computer bag. That's okay. We are doing a postcard for Mackenzie from our February box. We'll release the tutorial for that on Thursday. We're painting her a jellyfish. That's what we're going to do. Pink and purple. Super fun. Uh, again, you can paint whatever you want on those postcards. But if you need a little help, we'll release that on Thursday and we'll do that together. Okay, I think that's it. You guys are awesome. 
Everyone say bye. 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 bye.